My name is Joe Piveronis. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive tech stocks and companies for a broad audience of institutional retail investors across the globe. So today we're going to talk about a company called Twist Bioscience, some of the challenges that are facing them and sort of a checkup on the stock since it's been a while since we've taken a look at what they're up to. And before we dive into the inner workings of Twist based on their latest 10K that was filed, I wanted to share with you this picture that's quite interesting. So this is a stack of phone books that somebody put together. And some of you may not even recall what a phone book is, but essentially it's uh, what we used to use to look up phone numbers and it contains, each phone book contains a lot of information. Well, if you took all the information that you see in the phone books in this picture, that would equate to the information that's contained within a single strand of DNA. So DNA is quite remarkable and it contains a lot of information. It's what creates us, it what makes us unique. And synthetic biology largely surrounds manipulating DNA so that we can do cool things. So for example, George Church was working on an organism that could sweat petrol, that's pretty cool. So when we're able to start doing things like gene editing, we can change DNA and we can start to harness the power of nature. So synthetic biology is probably one of the single most exciting disruptive tech themes we cover. So it makes sense to invest in the picks and shovels. And that's where we came across Twist. Now, what Twist does, their core competency is creating synthetic DNA. So here they've shown their, the advantages that they have over their competition. While everybody else can only create one oligo per well, Twist can create a whole slew of them, a million on a single chip. So the ability for Twist to create synthetic DNA is at a 10,000 times advantage in terms of scale and throughput than their competitors. And then they've automated the entire thing with some robotics, they've built some proprietary software, and they've built an entire platform around creating synthetic DNA. So that was the original thesis, the original reason we invested in Twist. And what synthetic DNA is used for is all kinds of different things. So across industries, um, and then there's some very exciting areas such as data storage. So going back to that phone book example, you can store a lot of information on a single strand of DNA. Why wouldn't we use that for data backups? So that's something that Twist and a lot of other companies are working on. Now, so far, that's worked out quite well for the firm. So you can see here revenues by geography. Twist is selling predominantly to the Americas, but EMEA is also growing at a decent clip and APAC to a lesser extent, but Twist is selling their products across the globe. And when we look at this chart, which shows the steady revenue growth for the company, it's absolutely beautiful, right? Um, and, and this chart that you see here, this is what we're gonna focus on talking about today because these days Twist is doing a lot more than just creating synthetic DNA. Now, they've broken down their revenues into a number of categories, so let's start by looking at these. The bottom most category that says Symbio non ginkgo that's creation of synthetic DNA as the, per the original thesis. Then they have Symbio ginkgo Now, just a side note here, you may or may not be aware of what's going on with Ginkgo Bioworks. We published a comprehensive video on that topic relating to the short report and the, the bull and, and bear scenarios for that company. But somebody had raised a good question that if Ginkgo ran into problems, how would that affect Twist Bioscience? Well, that's a very good question. And, and it's quite interesting. If you look here on this chart, December 18, you see that would have been a huge hit. But then when you go to March 21, you see that would have been a much lesser hit. So in other words, the percentage of revenues attributed to Ginkgo Bioworks are becoming less and less over time. And perhaps that's why they've discontinued reporting that. So you see the little footnote that says June and Sept 2021, Synbio includes Ginkgo. So they're just balling that all together. Now, the second observation to make here is that if we just look at the green, collectively, we see that that category, what they're calling Synbio, is not growing 
at the same rate that the category above it is. And the category above it, they've listed as NGS. That stands for Next Generation Sequencing and refers to tools that they're developing for next generation sequencing. And we know that Illumina, with an 80% market share, owns the next generation sequencing space with their machine. So the last category on top there in purple is biopharma. So let's talk a little bit about that. So biopharma consists of R&D agreements that Twist is making with third parties. And it's the upfront plus milestone payments down the road arrangements. And the problem that we always have with these setups is that they're unique. Every relationship that Twist Bioscience has with a company is unique and they don't pro provide any visibility into that. But what we like to see here on that, these little purple caps on these bars is the steady, steadily increasing revenue related to biopharma. So one problem with the whole milestone and royalties bit is that it creates chunky revenue streams. Well, this is very nice, smooth growth. So what bio, what the biopharma offering from Twist is largely about antibody discovery and antibody optimization. So the partners bring them targets, they do the work, and then they get some upfront money for that and then milestone and royalty payments down the road. So that's kind of nice, right? You, you always want to have that breakdown and you can see companies like Ginkgo trying to do something very similar, though Ginkgo is claiming that a great deal of value will be generated down the road. And we don't like promises of value. We like to see value today. So it's good to see that the biopharma segment is growing quite fast for Twist Bioscience. And on their latest investor deck, they talk about how they've completed 19 programs and they have 31 partners. They have all these active programs and milestones and royalties that they've realized. These are some pretty nice numbers, even though we don't have any insight into, into the details behind them. Now, looking at twist customer concentration, this was interesting because of the whole Ginkgo thing. So if you look back to September of 2019, they said, there was one major customer who accounted for 17% of our revenue, probably Ginkgo. And then you look at September 30th, 2020, and they say two major customers accounted for 12 and 10%. One of those was probably Ginkgo. And then most recently they say no major customer accounted for more than 10% of revenues. Perfect, right? You don't wanna have that customer concentration risk. They've removed that and that's great to see. Now, when we look at growth by segment, remember the bar chart we looked at earlier, these are those different segments. So synthetic genes and oligo pools would fall into the uh, Synbio category. And then you have the biopharma bit there, uh, DNA and biopharma libraries and NGS tools. This is interesting. Just And we only have three years of data, but we can still do a compound annual growth rate. For synthetic genes and oligo pools, decent growth, double digit, that's great. Look at the growth for DNA and biopharma libraries in terms of the revenue growth. And then look at NGS tools. So this is now where the majority of their revenues come from, more than 50%. Synthetic genes, slowest growing segment. And NGS tools, we'll talk about why, is a very strong growth segment for the company. And overall, this translates into pretty strong revenue growth. So that metric, there's nothing wrong with that metric. We always look at revenue growth, uh, what a company says they can do, and what they actually do is reflected in nothing but revenue growth that shows traction, it shows the product market fit, shows everything that we need to see. Most importantly, they're capturing total addressable market. So that's great to see. Now, why has NGS tools been growing so quickly? Well, Twist explains it and says that there's, in doing next generation sequencing, there's always been this constraint about the need to produce these oligos. There's a high cost in the long turnaround time to produce oligos, and now that they can produce them very quickly, that they're then used to produce high quality target enrichment data. And the people who do this work will know what that means. And then the Twist DNA synthesis platform now lets them precisely manufacture a large number of these probes. So now that there's th this ability, all these additional applications for NGS open up. So they're simply riding on the backs of trends that are already happening disruptive other disruptive trends in synthetic biology so one thing that we want to be careful about here 
is that, okay, 2021 revenues came in at 132 million and a good chunk of that over 70 was for NGS tools, but how much money are they spending to get those sales? And you can see here that the sales, they're spending as much money on sales and admin as they are in, in return, getting a return from revenue. So want to be very conscious about companies that that uh, where a dollar in sales costs a dollar fifty, and they're also burning through quite a bit of cash. So we'll touch a little bit later on what their cash situation looks like. But one hundred fifty million dollars in twenty twenty one is is a meaningful amount of money to be burning through. So the one of the big concerns we have with Twist Bioscience is around the synthetic DNA capabilities that they have in-house. So they offer operate a services business model. Now we've been following this company for a number of years and expressed some concerns years ago about what they're doing. And this firm called DNA Script has built this cute little benchtop instrument that does on-demand in-house oligo production. So it's the world's first DNA printer powered by enzymes. And they're using this new approach. They're essentially using nature to create synthetic DNA enzymes. And there's all these advantages that they're touting. And you look at how they compare their platform to DNA as a service, that's clearly targeting twist. And they talk about all the benefits of having a, a benchtop instrument versus a service. Now, from the perspective of an investor, we would much rather prefer a company that sold instruments and then collected high margin consumables over time. So that's similar to Illumina. It's a great business model. And that's what we look for in life sciences firms. We try to shy away from the whole services business model because those are very tough to scale. And Twist is actually building another factory now trying to scale. We like the instrument business model much more, which is what DNA Script is doing. And it's not just DNA Script. There's other firms that are building benchtop instruments as well. We haven't seen Twist talk about how they plan to respond to that. Now, somebody had pointed out recently, very recently, I think just a week ago, that Twist announced they have an enzyme process now that they can use to create synthetic DNA. So they're keeping up to speed on that technology. But do they have a benchtop instrument? And the total addressable market here is not very big. So we're certainly keeping an eye on what DNA script is getting up to. And they've just recently took in a massive amount of funding this past month, somewhere around $200 million. And that's certainly going to be used to get this uh, benchtop instrument deployed. Now, the only way that we'll be able to tell how that's impacting Twist Bioscience is by watching their revenue growth. So that's that that says it all. Now. What Twist seems to be doing is pivoting into other areas, as we saw with the uh, biopharma niche, right? And they've actually acquired a company called Avaris, and that's to complement their antibody discovery capabilities. They say here, there's three key approaches to antibody discovery, synthetic libraries, which is their specialty, in vivo discovery through animal models, which is the acquisition they've made here, and artificial intelligence models, which is, which is the software they've built. So this acquisition will complement what they already have in-house. And then there's also this spin out. So uh, Twist has spun out this Revelar Biotherapeutics and they stand to gain all these potential milestones. And this is around a antibody that can treat COVID and, um, you know, it's it, the spinoff is interesting, right? But it's um, it remains to be seen how much how much of that hundred million they actually bring in. We only count the eggs once they're they're hatched. So, um, Twist is it appears expanding into other areas that you know can potentially offset the damage that might be caused by DNA script taking some of their their um, their thunder, but um, that it's still a concern. Now, when you look at the size of the Synbio market, you know, they talk about, well, it's a $3 billion TAM and it's large and expanding. $3 billion is not a very big total addressable market at all. As a matter of fact, we consider that to be quite small. Most of the total, total addressable markets we like to look at, you know, 20 billion, 30 billion, 40, 50 billion dollar total addressable markets. Now this is expanding. And of course, if they can get into the data storage bits, then that's great. But when there's a small 
piece of the pie to be captured and you have a number of competitors trying to capture it, you can't operate without stepping on somebody else's toes. So we just need to consider that when we think about um, twist strategically as an investment. Now looking ahead, things look really well. They've got 480 million cash in their books. So if they burnt 150 million in 2021, that would what give them theoretically, if they burnt the same three years, revenue guidance between 173 and 181, that's great growth. And you know what, on top of that, another 10 million if they close that um, acquisition. And then they have their new enzyme approach to gene synthesis. So presumably they'll be able to do things better, faster, quicker. So there's a lot to like about Twist Bioscience and they're certainly a company that we're holding at the moment and we'll continue to hold, but we do have some reservations surrounding that um, DNA script and, and, and the likes of, of them. So the one thing that we like to look at when we're analyzing firms is what we call the simple valuation ratio. And the way that this works is we'll take the market cap of a company. So take the market cap of Twist and we'll divide that by annualized revenue. So the market cap of Twist right now is about $2.75 billion. And then if we take the last quarter revenues was 38 million. So what we can do then is divide that out and get our simple valuation ratio. So we take that, divide it out and we get, um, uh, we're divided, just doing it manually here because we actually didn't calculate that on this slide. And we're getting about, so that's 2734 divided by uh, 160 since they had 40 million in the last quarter and that's about 17. So a simple valuation ratio of 17 isn't that bad at all. That's how you, that's how we calculate our valuations and, and other people have different ways of, of valuing firms. But we usually use that just to get a general idea. We have a cutoff at 40, so we don't purchase stocks that are over 40. So twist wouldn't be considered overvalued at least by this metric. So. Um, the last thing we'd say is just that the biggest concern we have checking in on this stock would be that their services business model could be displaced by a hardware business such as the one from DNA Script. And, you know, we say, well, maybe the Blue Ocean TAM is large enough so that both companies can thrive without stepping on each other's toes. And it doesn't seem to be the case, right? Unless they've underestimated the size of the potential market. So going forward, we're going to be keeping an eye on Twist what they get up to. We like to check in with our stocks about at least once a year. And this is interesting, uh, looking at what Twist has been getting up to and how they're diversifying the revenues outside of just synthetic DNA. So thanks so much for joining us today's call. Really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channels. We're putting out more videos over time. Thank you very much.